actually investigated, you have a body of evidence that simply can't be ignored. There's something very, very strange. But what happens when an entire city witnesses a UFO reported to be as large as two or three football fields? It was the shape of a boomerang. A large black object coming right towards us. I thought I was going to pass out because I was so enthralled in looking at this thing. And I said, that's not a mile long. In 1997, thousands in Phoenix, Arizona witnessed an enormous craft. Do these lights belong to visitors from outer space? UFO it was being blasted all over the television, so people were going outside of their houses and looking up in the sky. Now, new evidence is introduced in one of the most enduring UFO cases in history. All hell broke loose, basically, and we had a complete lockdown. Official explanations are dissected. The Air Force stated that flares were dropped around 10 p.m., but witness reports came in over an hour before the flares were dropped. So using that excuse makes a mockery out of what thousands of people said they saw. And a former governor reveals his startling admission. I knew more about the lights over Phoenix than I let on. This is the Phoenix Lights. I'm Fife Symington, the former governor of Arizona, and in the spring of 1997, there was a very unusual event that occurred while I was the governor. I guess some people refer to it as the lights over Phoenix. It was Thursday night, March 13th, 1997, 8.30 p.m. My daughter Monica came running in to say there was something coming over the end of Camelback Mountain. And so four of the kids got up, ran out, and I ran out with them. And I looked to the north. My wife and I saw three bright white lights in triangle formation coming right towards us. It had five big lights in front, and it was the shape of a boomerang. It was a solid craft, silent, very low to the ground. And the thing that took me was the size. Profoundly enormous, profoundly massive. I mean, we don't even have shopping centers this big. We stood and watched it come, and it floated directly over our house. And it was probably five to six minutes that we had full view of this. My wife and I, we just stared at each other. And I looked at her right now, and I says, we just saw our first UFO. Do these lights belong to visitors from outer space? Hundreds of people across the valley think it's a distinct possibility. What is described as a giant, brightly lit boomerang soars through the air. No official explanation of those strange bright lights. That night it was being blasted all over the radio, all over the television. So people were going outside of their houses and looking up in the sky. And it was being viewed by thousands of people across the valley. There were barrages of phone calls coming into the governor's office and to the Department of Public Safety. People wanted answers. So, of course, I was making my inquiries immediately to the head of the National Guard. And I had members of my staff calling Luke Air Force Base to find out if they were flying some exotic aircraft over the valley and not really getting any answers. I mean, everybody was just sort of, oh my gosh, well, <laughs> we don't know what it is. Something strange happened in the skies over Arizona that still hasn't been fully explained. It's something UFO enthusiasts are calling a major sighting. Pilots report seeing it in the air, yet military radar screens pick up nothing. Whatever it was, it has more than a few Phoenicians watching the skies tonight. Well, in the weeks following the incident, over 700 witnesses called in reports to local officials and to the National UFO Reporting Center, a private organization in Seattle, Washington. And these witnesses included pilots, police officers, and military professionals. Although descriptions of the craft differ, several overriding characteristics prevail. It is a massive solid object, not merely lights, in the shape of a delta or triangle. And it makes no noise as it moves over the valley. Most importantly, it is viewed from multiple vantage points by witnesses across the county for a total of 106 minutes. We literally were laying down on the grass looking up so at it. It was a solid, solid, solid object. Something that I'll never explain. Real deal. It was a major UFO event seen by thousands of people across the state of Arizona. 
and they were expecting a serious response from the government. Well, you can imagine the uh, building hysteria that was going on in our community about what really happened and uh, and what we were going to do about it. I'm going to order a uh, full, you know, investigation of this through DPS. We're going to make all the necessary inquiries and we're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to find out. I was probing, trying to get answers, but everybody was sort of denying that they saw it in official channels, which really had me perplexed. And Councilwoman Barwood really took the lead. She called Senator John McCain, and uh, the senator was the first person to get something out of the Air Force. The Air Force tells Senator McCain that the lights are high-intensity flares, dropped by the National Guard between 9.30 and 10 p.m. But since the sightings began at 8.15 p.m., over an hour before the flares were dropped, and in a different part of the city than the UFO was seen, this fails to explain what many witnesses saw. They were all shot right around 10 o'clock at night. They were all southwest of Phoenix. They weren't even over the city or even in the county. What my wife and I saw happened at 8.30. Seems to me this big object came over at 8.30. The authorities decided they better do something to cover it up, so they had a player show at 10. Well, it was an intentional diversion, yes. What's really confusing is that the lights that were shown on TV that night were actually the flares. Do these lights belong Because the news footage was taken at 10 p.m. when the flares were dropped. Strange dots of light that were the top of But that doesn't explain what all the witnesses saw. The flares were dropped over two hours after the sightings began. These were two separate events. Casting further doubt on the Air Force's explanation is this never-before-heard recording of a call made by an airman at Luke Air Force Base to the National UFO Reporting Center early in the morning on March 14th. Apparently, we got a call from um, Prescott Valley Airport, a small airport um, north of us, reporting an object that had a near-miss with a small Cessna. The call came up approximately 8.32 that they encountered something over Phoenix, Arizona, over the area of 7th Avenue and Indian School Road. They don't know what it was. According to the airman, Luke Air Force Base launched two F-15s to investigate the incident shortly after 8.30 p.m. He spoke with one of the F-15 pilots after their return, describing him as visibly shaken. The command pilot of this particular flight, how oh, I've never seen this man scared. And he, he was scared to death. He's not sure what it was. His statement was that they followed this aircraft. It went on a straight line course heading towards Sky Harbor Airport, which is one of our main airports here, at approximately 18,000 feet, descending to 10,005. He saw five distinct lights in a triangular pattern. First three lights were in a tight triangular formation, and then the other light was at about 400 yards, also uh, on the east side of the triangle. It scared the hell out of them, and after they landed, the base was, uh, we, had, we had a complete lockdown. All hell broke loose, basically, and the facility was closed. Despite the shocking testimony, the Air Force categorically denies the encounter. But like the Rendlesham case before it, official attempts to dismiss the sightings are unsuccessful. It was the story that wouldn't go away, and the governor knew he would have to address it. Governor Fife Symington is determined to find out what those lights are all about. Soon the Phoenix lights would reach national prominence as Governor Symington reveals his astonishing news. I knew more about the lights over Phoenix than I let on. To escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. It's time to correct the record once and for all. <laughs> When you serve in public office, you have to be very careful dealing with um, sensitive, uh, incendiary subjects like uh, UFO sightings. Well, I'm going to order a. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if you're a public official and you start talking about UFOs, you really get attacked. It's unbelievable. So we start tonight with those strange dots of light. Rush, the left side. In 1997, thousands witnessed a UFO over Phoenix. Reports described a delta-shaped craft, several football fields in length 
Like the craft at Rendlesham, it was viewed from multiple vantage points by witnesses across the county for a total of 106 minutes. Thousands of people saw it, and there was quite a buildup of public interest almost close to uh, hysteria. UFO enthusiasts all over the country... Three months after the sighting, USA Today features the Phoenix Lights on its front page, forcing Governor Symington into the spotlight. In early June, there was some major publicity, and all of a sudden we found ourselves sort of besieged. So I uh, organized this uh, press conference to try to get people to kind of climb off the emotional mountain a bit. On June 19th, Symington holds a news conference to announce the mystery has been solved. And now I'll ask Officer Stein and his colleagues to escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. Don't get him too close to me, please. <laughs> Now, this just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. <laughs> it really was a very funny spoof, but unfortunately, it was taken the, the wrong way. It was an insult, and I'm greatly offended, as are many, many witnesses, because a lot of people could have came forward. But instead, they became reclusive. They refused to talk about it because of this, because of the ridicule. I was angry over it because I know what I saw and I did not like that kind of uh, attitude. When this thing was over my house for five minutes, someone should care. Someone should care. That press conference, it really did upset a lot of people, and I regret that. <laughs> but what really bothered me was that uh, I knew more about the lights over Phoenix than I let on. And um, I should have talk more openly about my own experience uh, sooner. On March 13th, I was having dinner with my family. We had the TV on, and um, I was well aware of the news about the UFO. So I said, I'm going to jump in my car, and I'm going to go down Lincoln Drive past Squaw Peak and uh, see if I can see what's going on. When I got here, there were people milling around, uh, just enjoying the park. And uh, I was here for probably five or 10 minutes. And somebody said, look at that, look at that. And out to the northwest, this great big massive craft, probably around three or 4,000 feet, took out a whole chunk of the sky. And you could see other aircraft in the distance, but airplanes look like uh, little toothpicks compared to the size of this craft. And it came right at us made not a sound and just moved almost sort of gently and smoothly not that fast it just glided over squaw peak and uh, we had a magnificent view of it silhouetted governor symington observes the object for nearly a minute before it speeds away across the valley it just all of a sudden disappeared you know i've served in the u.s air force and i've been flying all my adult life I've never seen anything like that before. It obviously had unbelievable uh, aeronautical capabilities, something way beyond anything we have in our inventory, that's for sure. But I thought I best to be quiet about it because I'm the governor, and if I go start talking about it, it's um, going to create uh, more hysteria, and one should not lose sight of the fact that I had a state to run. Symington maintained his silence throughout his second term, but now, nearly 15 years later, the former governor draws lessons for all public officials. I think as far as government is concerned, we're sort of driven to always have an explanation for everything. And it's hard for government entities to say, you know, I don't know. You know, like we, we can't explain it and admit to complete vulnerability. And now I'll ask off but I learned a hard lesson about this subject based on personal experience. Public officials need to be more open and more courageous in dealing with issues like this. We need to deal with it legitimately and objectively. And if we don't know what it was, I mean, you should say, we don't know what it was. It's time to square up and do the right thing. The particulars of what was seen that March 1997 night are still avidly debated. And the Phoenix Lights case remains unsolved. But what is not in question is the case revealed an urgent need in UFO study, an official government process for receiving and investigating reports. 
As it stands now, for people in the United States, there is no official body for them to go to if some kind of event takes place, which they feel needs to be reported. And what's interesting is that in terms of the aviation community, the FAA has actually told its employees in its manual that if they see a UFO, they are not to tell the FAA about it. 